Hello, Kaden and I are back today. You guys, I missed not painting with you. I really, I really was aware that we didn't paint yesterday and the day before. So, um, I'm sorry. I don't know what we're gonna do when it gets to be full out summer. We're just gonna have to wean ourselves away from doing this every day because I don't know. I think there's, I don't know. I don't want to say that I want to quit doing this, but. We'll just maybe tone it down a few less days because I know we'll be doing other things in the summer. I hope. I hope we get to go to the pool. Do you think we will? Who knows? Anyways, we are back today and we're going to do, I have this cute um, vegetable garden idea to do. Do you guys got your gardens in yet? We were going to do one. We didn't get anything really prepped for it. So I have a few places I'm going to do a few things, but... I don't want a big garden. I did the garden days before. It's a lot of work. But anyways, we have some tomato plants and pepper plants and some watermelon seeds and some butternut squash seeds. What else do you need? Yeah, right? Okay, so we're going to get started. This is going to be super cute. It's going to be kind of a whole garden environment thing. You guys can add some worms and some bugs or whatever. I know that we had requests for bugs and I have another bug one we're going to do, but I mean, you can have all the bugs you want. So anyways, we'll get started because this one may take a little bit longer because there'll be so many fun things we can add to it. So I'm going to switch seats and we'll paint. Make sure you guys say hello. And... Hopefully missing a couple days didn't mess anybody up or make Facebook not want to show as many people or the same people that were doing this. Sometimes that's kind of a way Facebook works. Hey, Lori's here. All right. Good afternoon. We got tomatoes, sweet corn, asparagus. I would love and strawberries. Yum. We used to have strawberries a long time ago at a house that we or a fourplex that we rented and I love being I'm going to change the angle here I love being able to go out and just get berries for breakfast actually we had them at our last house too they didn't grow as well then um hang on sorry I'm gonna to have to wiggle this a bunch for a second because the neck I had to move my camera yesterday so I didn't get it back right does that look like you guys can see okay I hope so we'll see how it goes okay so anyways, we're going to start here. So we're going to do this kind of, like if you cut the ground away. Did you put him on the... No. Oh, he's just squirrel. barking at squirrels. Okay. We have a naughty dog. He's been going to his best friend's house, which happens to be my husband's sister's. And... They live a little over a mile away, I think. And we go over there frequently. And they have a dog the same size as our dog. And they are like best friends. And Bear takes off. And they find him sitting on their front porch in the morning. Waiting for Hank to come out and play. So anyways, he's kind of on the naughty list right now. Because he can't be doing that. So, okay. So, oh, he can see my tea in here. I got tea. I'm kind of chilly today. Because our house is chilly. All right, we are going to do a side view of this garden, almost like if we could cut the, like if we just cut the slice of earth away and we're looking in, we're gonna see the dirt and the roots coming down and the vegetables up on top. So this will be fun. And you can do tunnels with worm tunnels or ant hills and ant tunnels and, and all that kind of stuff, okay? Sound like fun, Caden? Yeah. Yeah? All right. He's all pumped. You can't see him, but he's smiling. He does really talk. Not much. Okay. So, the vegetables that I want to do, now you guys always know you can do it ones you like, but the ones that I intended for this was different root vegetables, just because I thought it'd be fun to have the colors down in the dirt. So, do you know what root vegetables that we can do? So, I know some, a few of them. Actually, I know all of them, but um, a few that I'm going to do. So we're going to start. Let's start with the obvious. Maybe the first one that comes to your mind might be carrots. So carrots are longer and thinner. So first thing we want to do 
is I'm not going to draw the line going across for the dirt because some of these vegetables may be up a little bit, so I'm not going to do that. But I am going to try to make sure I keep aware of where my dirt line is. So I'm just right down the middle because we want room for the green stuff at the top. Maybe just a little bit higher than the middle, okay? So I'm going to just make my carrots. And you guys all know what carrots look like, I hope. So I make my lines kind of wiggly because they're not perfectly straight. They got the little rounded bump part at the top and then the sides go down. That looks like my carrot has earmuffs on. Anyways, this is kind of a skinny carrot. But I'm gonna go on beyond the tip because that's where the roots are. And then we'll just draw in some roots with our Sharpie. We're not gonna to try to paint them. We'll just make the roots go on there. All right, so now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do three carrots. So I'm gonna make the little top part it's a little bit smaller than the body of the carrot, so this one's bigger. Oops, what happened there? That was a new Sharpie because I didn't know where my Sharpie was. Oh, you found it? Yeah, I found it. So carrots are all different shapes. They can be really weird. Yep. We've grown carrots a few times and they never tasted very sweet when I grew them. And they're hard to grow. You have to have, you can see you just threw the marker in the video. Um, and you have to have like a sandy soil for carrots. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna come over here, do one on this side. And that one's not quite as long. So I just make sure I do all my little hairy little roots here, which they're reaching down. They go downward because they're reaching for that water. That would be the same way if we were drawing trees when we make branches. They go up, reaching up for the sunshine. I mean, not all branches. Okay, so we got carrots. So now we're going to do the tops. So you can make, um, these are like more almost like lacy. Remember, you can overlap. So I'm putting the stems on here, and I'm not going to make the stems, I don't think, like two edges to them. I need to make this bigger so I can see it better. Nope, that didn't even help. There we go. Alright, just want to see the picture a little bit better. So these are, they almost... I mean, they're just like little lacy leaves all over these stems. So you can just make, I'm just doing little wiggly lines, like oval shape, but they're all wiggly and wonky looking. They're kind of, aren't they kind of, I'm trying to think, there's carrots, a bunch of carrots. I can't even think exactly what this leaves look like, but it'll be good enough. They're kind of lacy looking, I guess, I'm trying to think. But I'm also looking at a clip art picture and I don't know that they're really... I'm not a real picture. Well, because I didn't want this to be really... that we were trying to make it realistic. I wasn't really trying to do that. But I think we'll get the idea. So I'm just making these little wiggly, wiggly lines and attaching them to my stem here. The, oh, I see. And then it has like smaller stems going off, I think. With more leaves. Maybe that's where it gets. So it's like got some stems going off of these. But we don't want to get where we're spending the whole time just making leaves for our carrots. So we want to do it quick. Just wiggle, 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 out and in. 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 This definitely will take the perfectionism out of some of you, probably more adults, if you just follow along like this, where you just wiggle, 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 out and in. Wiggle, 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 out and in. 
because if you spent all this time trying to make it perfect, we would be wiggling leaves out for days. We don't really want to do that because we've got other things to draw. I'm just making one big tulip. Just one? He decided after making all the wiggly leaves you didn't want to make a whole bunch? And this one probably, I don't think I will get all of this painted with you today, but we may get a good amount if we keep moving on our wiggly leaves. I think the carrot has the most work on the leaves. The other veg vegetables won't be quite this crazy. And I'm trying to like tuck them behind the other ones when I get over there where they're overlapped, and then they start making no sense, so who knows where I'm at. But it'll give you the whole appearance of carrots with all the leaves on top. Does not have to be perfect, because we get the idea. I think those look pretty awesome. All right, there's our carrots. All right, so now let's do Let's do a beet. You guys like beets? I love beets. I do pickled beets a lot. I'll buy fresh beets and I'll pickle them and keep them in the fridge. And they have golden ones and red ones. How does your leaves come along, Caden? Oh, good. You got good wiggly leaves. Oh, yeah. You got some good texture. Caden did this on his carrots, which is so what we need to do. He's got, sometimes they get little roots coming out the side. Also, they can have little lines because they're like creases in them. Caden would know carrots. Caden eats more whole raw carrots than any kid I know. But they do have roots that come out of the body of them. Caden and the dog love carrots and they'll eat whole ones. Bear, when he eats carrots, he looks like he's smoking a cigar. So make your lines that, that are going crossways over your carrots. Make them random. No spacing evenly or anything like that. All right. There's our carrots. They look like they're holding hands. They look like little people. And they got their little feet and they got their little arms going on there. I could almost make faces on it, but I'm not going to. All right, so let's do a beat. I'm going to do the beat. The beat. Turn up the beat. I'm gonna do it over here. Okay, so you got the little top part, kind of like the carrots, that where all the, the leaves are gonna come out of. And then you got the bulb here, and it comes to a point because that's where the little roots are. And the same as a carrot. It's Who's got the that? little point. That's potatoes. So see how there's a whole bunch. She's asking me what that other picture is. So anyway, so this is our beet. I'm just going to put a couple lines going this way on it. It has this part up here where all the stems come out. And beets have bigger leaves. Let me move this out of the way. Um, so they have bigger leaves in there. And they're really pretty too because the veins in the leaves are red. And then the leaves are green. So that will be fun to paint. So then, if anybody else is watching or joining us today, be sure you say hello. I feel like I lost all my painters. It is, I know we got a lot to do because it's supposed to get rainy and cold. So I've been doing some yard work to get, I bought all my flowers, what was left at the nursery, which wasn't much. But I bought all my flowers the other day and I decided I wasn't going to plant them yet because we're supposed to, we got a freeze warning for Friday night. So in case you guys didn't know that, you guys be aware if you need to cover up especially your garden vegetable plants. So I went ahead on this one, um, made my, because I want to see those red stems, I made my little veins and my leaves double lined. 
so that way I have a little bit of a space to put put um, the red paint in between the green. Okay, so this leaf is going to have to go behind that one. So that'll be tricky, you guys. This, you know what? I I won't get this all painted for sure. I can tell you right now because there's a lot to it. And you guys go ahead and make all the details you want with this. This is what's fun, um, is just drawing all these details and then um, just paint it in. And if you don't get it all done during class time, it's fine. We'll share it. And I'll put mine up there um, once it's finished later. I'll add it, my picture. All right. So there's my beat. All right. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to come over and do some radishes, whoops. Because they're cute. And I've bought, mm, they're called Easter egg radishes, I think. I don't see, hey Sheila, I don't see, um, I don't see them. I get my vegetables at Sprouts a lot in Liberty. They haven't had them anymore, and I love them. They're so cute. They're um, radishes that are purple and pink, different shades of pink and red and white. Yeah, it's like they make a beautiful salad, but they haven't had them. Okay, so they're going to be just like the, the beets. They're just round. They can be really round, and then they have the little because they're all root vegetables, so their roots go down from the bottom. Remember, you don't have to have them any perfect shapes here. So, I'm just going to stop with the radishes. The other things, there's onions you could do. There's potatoes you could do, which would be potatoes have their own plant system under the ground. So that's something else you could do. But for sake of space, I'm not gonna keep doing more because I wanna do a little bit of the, well, I might do an onion, we'll see. Okay, let's do some radish leaves. So they're, I don't know how to destroy, they're kind of rounded on the ends. And they have smaller leaves kind of at the base of their, and they're pretty thick. So there'd be layers of them. So it'd be kind of a matter of just figuring out how to layer these. They just have the little leaves down towards the bottom. So I would just layer a bunch of, they look like little bunny rabbit ears. Just layer a bunch of those in for your your radish leaves. I keep trying to make the tips of them round and I make them pointed. So I have a lot of extra lines there. Okay, so let's get some more leaves on this one. These little, little baby leaves down at the bottom. And then like bunny rabbit ears. I just layer them in here. more what it should be. And last one, make my little baby leaves down up towards the bottom. And then I just make them bigger. And I just put them, squeeze them in between. Whoop. All right, so there's my radishes. Do I have room for this onion? Let me see here if I have room, oops. There's a turnip we could do. Um, which I don't, I could put it there or this onion. Let's do the onion just because it has different leaves. And so this onion's not going to be very big. So I'll just make my bulb shape for my onion bulb. And then they have all these little stringy roots coming out of 
start at the bottom of this one. And then if you've seen an onion, they kind of have the little lines in the onion skin. So I did those in there. And then their leaves are the tall, skinny. Like a bunch of spaghetti noodles. My eyes are starting to see cross-eyed already because I can't tell where. My leaves are going here. All right, there's our onion. Okay, so now I'm going to make my ground go through. So if your line isn't straight, it's okay because garden soil can just be whatever. We'll see how good I did, but it does not have to be perfectly straight. So these vegetables are right at the very top of the soil. Okay, so there's my soil. Okay, so this is where you kids can do some fun stuff or grown-ups. So we want a little wormhole because we need earthworms, right? Earthworms in our garden. So I'm just making tunnels in my dirt. And I don't know where these tunnels are gonna go. I'll just go off the paper. There could be little places, I don't know, you guys may know way more about this kind of stuff than me. Like there could be like little ants in here. I'm just making little tree part, here I was doing worms and I made ants instead. But you'll get the idea. So this could be an ant hill. I was cleaning out a place out in my yard by the end of the driveway, and there was like a huge, I thought, man, this dirt's really soft. It's like, this is really good dirt, and it was a big old ant hill. So you can do ants in here. And then you could make worms. This worm's only just starting to make its hole here. Anyways, I'm not going to keep doing this stuff because this is where you guys are great with your imagination. But this worm, who knows which side's the front end or the back end. But regardless, he's got this hole down here going in the dirt. I'll make a couple more ants and then I'm going to paint. So first thing I'm going to paint in with you guys is I want to do the vegetables this part so you can kind of see the colors and then you guys can go to town with it. I mean you can go to town anyways. You don't need my help. I'm sure by now you guys are totally doing this on your own. I'm just kind of the idea person. And you're my excuse to want to paint. All right, so I'm using my smaller brush just because these are smaller. So let's start, I'm gonna start with the radishes because they're pink at the top and then they're kind of white when they get down towards the base of them, down towards the bottom side. So I'm getting my paper wet with my paintbrush, painting all that suction in with water. Um, might have a little bit too much water. Now I'm gonna get my hot pink paint I'm just going to add it in here. What do we 
we paint the other day? I'm trying to think what our last painting was. It'll come to me. It's set up there. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was Monday. Oh, the lobster. I've got to show you my here in a minute that I finish. Okay, so I'm just bringing my pink down in my water. So I painted it with water first, and I'm just letting it come down, bringing, pushing that down, and then I'm not going to paint all the way down because that's going to, I think it should spread to where it kind of goes down into the base of this. So it's a really light pink. I'm going to push it too much, and then it's going to get dark. All right, so I'm going to do another one. My water is a little pink. I need to move my paper towel so it's on this side. So again, you guys, the radishes don't just have to be all one color because I used to get to buy those ones. Always so pretty. So I'm going to start with a little of the blue violet, which is kind of a purple color, up at the top. And then I'm going to add a little pink in here in the middle. Stop at the bottom. Not paint anything there at the bottom because that paint, as it dries, will start spreading. All right, last one. I'm going to start with my pink on this one. some of my red orange here. Just put a little water at the top. Get my red orange. I'm just adding some of this red orange at the top of this pink. Whoops. Getting out of lines here. So it's a little bit more redder. Alright, there's my radishes. All right, so let's do some carrots. Carrots come different colors too, but I think I'm just gonna keep my orange. I just want a good contrast for the dirt part. All right, so same thing. I just love the wet on wet technique. So I'm just taking water and I'm painting all inside my carrot with just water. And there's a little paint on it because I didn't get it super clean. Plus it helps you see a little bit better. And me too, that I'm getting it all painted with water. And then I'm going to take my orange. And I'm just going right down the edge of this with my orange. You want your paints to be really bold and bright colors if you get those cakes in your paint in your paint pans really wet and get that where it gets the paint wet in there, then it makes really bright colors. Alright, so I'm gonna take yellow now. yellow and I'm going to do yellow down the middle of this. Just pushing yellow in the middle and that's how I'm going to leave that one. All right. So I'm going to hop over. Let's go ahead and do a beat. yellow on my brush because it'll that'll be alright because I was gonna use the paint pink and the yellow will help keep it so it's a little redder. 
looks like an onion right now. That's an onion. That looks like an onion, but I'm going to change the color of it so it's going to be a beet. I'm using my red violet first. And I just sit it on there and let it spread around. Beet, that's about the color of beet juice right there. Beets are really healthy for you too. I don't think Caden eats beets though. He's a good vegetable eater. You know what you should have put on yours, Caden? How come you didn't make any fennel? Your favorite vegetable, and you didn't even make fennel. Hayden's regrowing. He he thinks it's like Christmas if I bring home him um, a fennel bulb from the store with all the green stuff growing out the top. So if you don't know what it is, it's a it's kind of a little bit forms a little bit like celery wood, but it has leafy, really fine leafy leaves that come out the top. And these stalks that are hollow, aren't they, Caden? So they're kind of like a straw. They're pretty small, like about the size of this paintbrush handle. But they, um, whoops. But they taste like black licorice, which I'm not a licorice fan, but they really aren't bad tasting at all. But he just loves to, to munch on those. All right, so I'm adding a little yellow in on top of my pink here for my beet. And because they're really dark red, look, it's too bright. I'm going to come over and get some of my blue violet. And I'm going to add some of that in the top of this to just get it just a really dark red color. Purpley red. I think. I think that looks good. Alright, so there is my beet. Now the onion is more of a golden color. So we will start with yellow. So I'm going to just paint it with water first. some of the top and bottom of the orange, but I want it to be more golden. Look how golden these are. Huh? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to just take a little edge of purple along the very bottom of this. In the very top. And it's making it a little brown. Looking on there, but then I'm going to go back with my yellow and go back over this. This one I'll just kind of pull those colors together, keeping a more higher concentration of yellow in the middle and let some of those browns tones kind of pull out from the top and the bottom. A little bit more orange in there. Orange helps give it a little bit more of the golden look to it. And then the purple just kind of browns up that. Okay, I'm going to let that be for that. Okay, so got a couple more carrots to paint, and then we'll do leaves, which are all going to be shades of um, green. Okay, so I just was looking at this. You guys can totally take all the time you want to do blue sky around the leaves. I would be here for hours if I tried to do that. I was just looking at the intricates intricacy of the leaves, especially of all these um, carrot ones. So I don't think I'm going to try to paint around it. If I did, 
um, where my colors would touch, the greens would start bleeding out into it. So I may just not even make my sky a color. Um, do your thing. Especially Kinsey and JC, you guys are doing awesome with your painting. So make your skies, whatever. I'm always, I love to see your creativity when you do this. So. So I'm getting my carrot all wet. I love my carrots, or my one carrot. So I did, got my carrot all wet, and I took my red orange. And I just followed down the edge of it. Caden, your painting's looking awesome, dude. He's got a tractor and a field of one carrot. Is that the only carrot that grew in your field? Yes. Yeah, and he's got his tractor out to go pick it? Yeah. Yeah, or is he planting something else? Uh -huh. oh, I just got paint on the back of it. There's Caden's. His one carrot with his tractor. Good job, dude. He's got it all painted. His one carrot filled. What are you planting in the field with your tractor, or are you not? Um, Just harvesting your carrot? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My only carrot? Your one carrot. All right, thank you for painting, Caden. So I'm pushing yellow in, so I did orange all the way down the sides, and then whatever space was left, I just pushed that orange into it. Okay. One last carrot. And I'm going to grab a bigger brush to do the dirt. Caden's giving a carrot I can have in the fridge. Hey, you should take a picture when we're done. Why don't you wait to give Bear a carrot? That'd be a good picture for your media class with him with his big old carrot. For both of you, I'll take a picture. Can you wait? And I'll take a picture of both of you guys eating carrots. Just set them down and I'll get you a picture for that, okay? Those would be good pictures. All right, pushing this yellow right in between my orange. So it has different shades of orange in it. I'm gonna make the tops of these darker with my pink. where the plant comes out. Okay, so I'm not gonna paint my worm yet. My my bugs, my ants are just black from the Sharpie, so I don't have to wor worry about that. So I am going to take a big Caden, excuse me, I'm gonna get this big flat brush that Caden was using. This is not a watercolor brush, you guys, but it works for this. Um, to just make the paint the the dirt so I'm going to paint right over the tunnels and my worm and everything and then I can add darker paint to the worms um, if I want to so I have just put the paint out of your eyesight here I don't need to all right so I'm going to start with just a section at a time let's come over here I want to get this wet and I want to try really hard not to let my water touch my beet because if the paper's dry between this and anything that I've painted then the paint won't start running together there 
All right, so I don't want to go too far because it's going to soak in before I get paint on it. I'll go right, see if I can go right down beside this carrot. Without, I could go closer, but I'm not doing it very close. Okay, and it's drying already. I can see the water absorbing in to the paper. All right, so different ways we can make browns. Of course, um, if you want to start with, try to get this up close so you can see a little better. You can start with, you may have brown, so go for it if you have brown. But if you don't, if you're using mixing paints like I have, I, you can start with whatever colors you want. So purple, I like purple and orange and purple and yellow for my browns. But this will make all that variegated and I just touched my beak because I knew I would because I get in too big of a hurry. So I'm going to start with that. So now I'm going to rinse all the purple out of this brush and then I'm going to, if I take yellow, It's going to be kind of a greenish color, but I can put some yellow in there. And then I could take orange. Brown is really dark orange. It's like orange and black would make brown too. But who wants to just use black when you can use all the other colors? Orange and um, purple make a good brown, I think. Now again, I'm trying not to get right up against some of this stuff, but it's happening anyways. So just put in different places a color and I just, I don't blend them all in. That way you have just all this different shades of dirt, which is awesome. I love gardening, I love planting flowers. I love weeding, even though it's a lot of work, but it's worth it, except when it all grows back. I wish it would stay weeded. I think heaven, I hope God gives me gardens in heaven that I can just restore. And when I clean the weeds out, that they never come back. So we, I would have the, I just love cleaning up something and making it look beautiful rather than just starting with something that's already clean. I don't know. It's just me. But it's a pain to always have to feel like you're never ending on weeding. Because Caden and I weeded, I have a big long flower bed all across the front of the house. And I was a couple, probably a good month ago, we weeded it really good. And it's all getting weedy again. Not big, but sure don't stay. Oh, Karen, hey, thank you. You like this? It's fun. You should do it with us. You should get some paints and do it with us. Okay, so I'm going to come over now to this side where I have all this space to get wet. Where my ants live, my A and T ants live. And the reason I'm using such a big brush is because I'm doing such big areas. And this is not a watercolor brush, but who cares? It works. When I finally learned it was okay to break all the rules of art and painting, became way freer. Karen, I have a link. You can go buy watercolors just like I have here. Or you should get some of those watercolor pens that we did. I don't know. You just can't be a perfectionist or you get way behind. Anyway, see all these colors in here? Isn't that cool? Now, I feel like that's too orange up here around my radishes because that's not a good contrast. 
So I've taken more purple up here to make this darker. And I didn't go with all the water. So see if I can get water from you. Yeah, there's that little ant hill that's up there that needs to be brown too. What time is it? 1.45? We've got time. Hopefully I'll get some of the leaves painted. This will be a really a colorful painting. I can't wait to see you guys' too. I'm sure everybody thought painting vegetables does not sound like fun at all. But whatever. They just missed out if they thought that. What's not fun at all is painting walls in your house unless you're painting some fun color. But that's the kind of painting that's not fun. Trimming is the worst. Prepping is the worst when it comes to all that stuff. I just want to get to the fun stuff. Can you tell that I'm like that? I don't know. I like skip steps when it comes to some things because I just want to do the fun. I just want the fun stuff. Yes, Karen, that is you being a perfectionist. I know. That's my sister I'm talking to in case anybody wonders. She's the oldest and I'm the youngest. And I'm the one that likes, well, she likes to have fun too, but she has to help me sometimes not want to eat ice cream all the time. It's fun watching me. Thank you. It's fun painting them. You guys can tell Karen. Yesterday was Karen's birthday. If you're on here, be sure and tell Karen happy birthday. I didn't get to spend it with her. She's halfway across the country. But we'll make up for it. All right, so there is my dirt and all the different shades of oranges and purples and browns. Let's see, I had a little splotch of yellow over there, so I feel like I need to do, let's add a little yellow over here for a little bit more water, just to kind of make all these different colors. I don't like the brush strokes, but I believe they'll blend out. All right, so. I'm gonna flip it upside down and let that dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna paint my worms, my worm, my one worm, maybe my little tunnels or something. I don't know, we'll figure that out. So this is my one little earthworm up here. All right, so now I just wanted to make sure I gotta paint these beet leaves because they're so pretty. All right, so we need a green and I don't have green on my tray. I'm gonna switch brushes here. Okay, first off, before I do that, I'm going to take, because my little stems for my beet are going to be the same color as the beet. So I want to put that purple in this. The places this way I did a double line so I could push some of this purple pink color in these veins of this leaf. And I'm not worried about staying in the lines for this at all because this is one where I do want the colors to bleed together and where that purple will kind of pull out a little bit into the green. Okay, so there's that. And that's the edge. Okay, so now I gotta make some green. I'll show you the green real quick. So I don't have green on here, right? So right here is where I've made green before. So I'm gonna just get on the suit. I, both these yellows originally are the same color. They just start getting a little changed as I mix colors because this one has more green in it just because my brush has had the blues or the purples in it. So I'm gonna bring, I keep loading up my brush really good, getting this really wet and coming over here. Okay, so I have this yellow going on. Okay, I already have a little bit of um, kind of a blackish brown or a purpley color. And I like that green, but it needs to be a little bit brighter. It's kind of a, like an olive. That one's pretty drab. There, you can kind of see it a little bit better. 
just a pretty fern green or but I do want it to be brighter but I don't want just like bright color green so I'm going to take some of this turquoise and add it in there just to get this green more of an emerald green looking not real bright Kelly green though. Okay, so see that green? Okay, so now I'm going to come and I'm going to go ahead and paint my leaves. And if that purple bleeds into this green, it's going to be okay. Isn't that a pretty green? You guys, this is exactly why I love to mix colors because for one, it saves a whole lot of money when you don't have to buy every single color to have all the colors. You would limit yourself if you had to buy your greens for your paintings because you'd be thinking, well, I don't have that shade. You can mix some. You can mix greens too if you have them. But anyways, it's just so fun to see all the different colors um, that you can make. and. This is what I do with all my acrylic classes that I teach. We just have, we have less colors than this for my acrylic class. We just use a white, a black, and a red, and a yellow, and a blue color. Um, they all have their certain names. And, um, but anyways, that's what we paint with. And we make all the colors for our paintings. And they're always so pretty. So I am, I just launched my very first membership course for my acrylic painting classes, which I'll teach just like I teach in my studio. And um, actually tonight, my doors closed for that. So if you guys are watching and you haven't signed up for it, um, it your, your last chance is tonight because um, I'm just, limiting that and then I got a lot of learning with the I have a I mean I've got a great group of people coming to join me in this and a lot of learning that we're going to be doing we'll be painting together once a week um everything will be recorded so if you, people can't get on when when I'm doing it then come back and watch it but um the ones that have joined me will be helping me just kind of form this and making it where it's something that everybody will just absolutely enjoy and love doing. So it, I launched it on Monday. I've had, I think I'm probably at 30 people that are in the group now, which is amazing. You guys so excited, um, to start this. We will start next week and that tonight's the last day to sign up. Okay, there's my beet leaf. Isn't that cool looking? They don't teach you how to mix cut. Well, they do very little. I mean, they'll tell you red, Karen. They'll tell you red and blue make purple, and yellow and and blue make green, and red and yellow make orange. And I, that's all I remember in school. I just learned the painting by this way by trying it. Because when I started doing my classes, I just bought those colors because I didn't want to have to. One, I probably didn't have enough money to begin with, so I just bought the basic colors. I've always liked mixing colors, so I don't think it was just that. I think that's just how I wanted to do it. I've been in places that do um, like the wine and, wine and paint classes like I do, and um, where they had all the colors, like a bunch of different colors all lined up. and It gives everybody's painting it, its own unique look because nobody is going to ever mix their colors exactly like somebody else and so everybody's painting is so original so much variation so much more beauty in having all these different array of colors that everybody made it's kind of like having your own fingerprint that's just unique to you you'll have your own mixture of paints that are just unique to you All right, I'm doing my little carrot leaves super fast, and I can't even find for sure where my lines are. We're going to work on this just a few more minutes, and then I'm going to get off and let you guys finish. And 
then we'll share later because I'm not going to get this done. Get a brighter green for my carrots. This was fun. I, you guys, I have not drawn in years and years, and I used to, that's probably where my whole art started as a little, little girl was just, I love to draw pictures. I drew pictures all the time. Um, and then, um, you know, and then as you start learning other mediums, which I didn't learn a lot because I'm just self-taught, so I really didn't get the opportunity to do much art, even um, not until after most of my kids are pretty well sort of raised. I don't know if they're even raised yet, but um, I just um, just kind of did my own thing, but drawing was always the thing when I did. My last art was in uh, junior high, and we didn't paint. I don't think we really painted. I don't ever re remember painting in junior high. Everything was draw drawing based. Stuff. I mean, I think we did pencil. I know we did color stuff, but I don't even remember for sure. I mean, I have some of my artwork. I'd have to look at it. But I do remember doing pencil a lot and shading. Learned a lot about that, which that's really important to learn. It's really important to learn about shading. So speaking of shading right here with color, I'm going to shade. This is why I'm making my tray paints a mess. I just grabbed it in some of my darker my turquoise blue and some of this purple and so I'm just those deeper places down on my leaves I'm adding the darker color in it down towards the bottom maybe a little bit on the top Karen, I'm going to tell a story about you and me. I've told this before, but you weren't on here. Um, so my sister is very... Okay, let me just give you a really quick so you'll know what we're like. When we cook in the kitchen, she measures everything, and I pretty much measure nothing. Okay, so that's, that's in a nutshell the difference between me and my sister. But she... And I still have this. I need to dig it out somewhere. I still have... The, unless Ariana has it. My oldest daughter might have it. But um, there's a coloring book that she had when we were little that was a Cinderella coloring book. And this was before the Disney Cinderella came out, I'm sure, I think. It was not a Disney Cinderella coloring book, but it was a Cinderella coloring book. And it was written like a story. So when you started at the beginning, it told the story of Cinderella. And she would color every page starting like from the beginning in order and it was so pretty and I was always a little jealous or maybe envious of well before I probably was like that probably just was like a just in awe of how beautiful it was that she would color she would outline with her crayon really hard lines on the outline and then when she would color it in it was so perfect that you couldn't even tell which way she colored like the the line there was no like lines you couldn't tell it was so perfectly blended and smooth and never did she ever go off the line like I do she didn't ever probably make a mistake um now, I, I thought I was the one that, when I finally got that coloring book, I thought I was the one that maybe went in and painted all the girl's lips red, but maybe she did it first. I don't know. I can't remember for sure on that. But I just know when I finally got that coloring book and I started coloring in it, I probably, my intention probably at first was to color in order wherever she left off, but I'm sure that didn't last long because... But wait, you want to paint or color Cinderella and her gown at the ball. You don't want to wait till you get all the other pictures done first. And I could never, ever outline like she could or color things in like she could. It just didn't ever look the same. So one day I will find that coloring book and I will share pictures of it on there. But anyways, it was a fun coloring book. But I just... It's funny that I just couldn't ever 
quite do it as well as she did. Right, Karen? And the funny thing is, is Karen doesn't think she could paint at all until last year. I had her help me with some stuff when I had a dinner and she did some painting with me and she had so much fun. She just thought it wouldn't be something she could do and she can. That's the thing. When you're perfectionistic, sometimes you just think you're not going to be good enough for something. You got to let that go because you're missing out when you, when you think like that. So just got to do it anyways. Do it afraid. Do it knowing that you're going to make a mistake and it's okay. All right, I'm gonna do my onion leaves. It's two o'clock. Yes, Karen, it is a funny story. I hope somebody else heard it. They, I don't know. I know there's a few people on here, but um, there'll be people watching it later. Okay, so I'm gonna do my onion leaves really quick, and I am not gonna paint my sky because you don't need to watch me paint my sky. Plus, it's gonna be a little difficult. And so I'm doing this one more without mixing it. So I just took my turquoise, now I'm taking my blue violet and just pulling it out of the top. Okay, that's all the blues I'm gonna use. Now I'm just gonna finish the rest with a bunch of yellow and it'll change all my blue shades to green. Cause that's how you make your green. All right, this was fun. I'm sorry for the ones that thought that gardens would be boring to paint because, oh wait, hang on, I'm going to turn it back around. Before I say that's it, let's get this little worm guy painted. Um, I'm going to take my black, we haven't used black yet, and I'm just mixing it right here in the middle where I have some reds and yellows, and I just made me a nice darker brown that I'm going to paint this little guy. Paint this little guy in here, this little worm, a dark brown. Okay, so I could, for better interest too, I could make all my tunnels dark brown too. I need a bigger brush. I would paint that better. Having the right size brush, you guys, is really important. Sometimes it's, I mean, I get that big flat brush when we do acrylic painting, um, I will nearly paint all of my painting with that. So it's okay to not use a bunch of different brushes, but just making sure that you're just, like I can tend to be lazy and just not get the right brush because I just don't wanna mess with switching it out. That's the thing. You don't, Oh, you see the hummingbird? Mm -hmm. Our hummingbirds are back. I eat the bird it's at the bird feeder with the seeds. They tried to and then went to the honey bee. Oh, did it? Mm -hmm. They'd choke on them seeds if they tried to eat those. All right. Finish my little worm or my little ant trail and then I will tell you all goodbye. Tomorrow we are painting a cow. I know that the neighbor that lives behind us requested that. Shirley, Cheryl Hurley. Um, Cheryl, if you, anybody knows her, make sure you let her know I'm painting a cow tomorrow because she requested that. So it'll be fun. So it's kind of farm thing. But anyways, it wasn't that fun. So there's our garden. And it makes me wish that I had all these planted, but I didn't. So we'll just have to have that to look forward to. But anyways, I will um, add this picture. I guess I'll get put it on there, but I want to see your pictures, though, um, when you guys are done. Be sure and add them on there. Thanks for hanging out. You guys have a great afternoon. I know we're supposed to get rain again. It's supposed to be chilly tomorrow, so tomorrow's going to be a really good day to paint. So um, we will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock to do a cow.